What's up? My name is David Moorfield. I am a freelance DP here in Orlando, Florida. And today's assignment is to film amateur mixed martial arts. And we are leaving the rolling cart and all the gear behind and using one camera and one lens. And I'm gonna see if the 16 to 35 2.8 G Master can handle sports cinematography. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how's it going? If you're familiar with the channel, you know that I switched from Canon to Sony. I sold all of my primes and I'm moving strictly to the Zoom Trinity. So I already have the 24 to 70 Mark II and I'm loving it so far. And the next step was the 70 to 200 G Master Mark II. However, I found a 16 to 35 G Master uh, and I could not pass the deal up. It was too good. So I didn't really want to get it, but it was a great business decision. And it came very soon, just in time for me to implement it on this combat night. So uh, that's the promotion that I work for uh, as a freelancer. Whenever they have gigs and I'm available, I jump on, I shoot and edit short reels for them. Okay, I want to see this. Yeah, this is I absolutely loved the Sigma 24 to 70 on my C70, and that was Super 35. So now to have 24 to 70 on full frame is a lot wider. But with the 16 to 35, 16 is very wide, and there's a couple considerations that come with 16 when you go that wide. So mainly, it is the chain link fence is a lot more visible at 16 than it is at 20. So I move it here, that's 20. You can see we zoom in a little bit. The fence becomes a little blurrier. I'm trying to keep it as close to the metal as possible. And if we go to 24, it's much more manageable. It's not cutting across the screen as hard. And back to 20, I think I'm gonna keep it around here tonight. It seems like a kind of a caveat, 16. Maybe if they're a tall fighter, I can keep it there. But that's the thing is you have to get the camera extremely close, but the closer you go, the wider you want to be. And then at 35, you can see it's, it's barely even noticeable. All right, you might wonder why I have my mics pulled so far back. And that is because in order to blur out the fence, I need to get the lens as close as possible, sometimes even touching. Uh, and therefore the mic keeps getting stuck in there. So I pull it all the way back. That way I can get as close as possible and uh, so far it's working good, no audio issues because of that. I shoot all of these handheld, but I'm gonna see maybe if I can do, uh, put it on sticks and maybe that'll work. Uh, I have a little bit of room, not much, but I really love this fluid head, the image, GH06 it is fantastic. I think punches way above its weight class. So let's give it a chance. So this promotion has events all around Florida and, and different venues. So this one, there's a little cubby where I can actually put my tripod, but normally I don't have this much room. So I'm gonna see how it goes from here on out. One thing that I really like about the FX6 is you see in the top left corner, it says 1.7, 2.4, eight feet, all that infinity. That is super helpful having a numerical value when I am zo uh, focusing, zooming, whatever, just to be able to know where I am. I would love to be able to have those markings on the lens, um, and I would like a more linear throw on this, on all of these G Masters, but having it there on the screen is actually nice because I don't have to look at the lens. I can look just at the external monitor that, that I'm using. So no internal or uh, OEM monitor on this one, but I am really, really liking this fluid head setup because your arms just get tired, your wrist gets tired, your neck and traps get tired from, from holding it tight to your body and also from looking down so much. So I think whenever I can in the future implement this setup having sticks and the camera on the tripod, I think this is what I'm gonna go to. We have 18 fights tonight, so a lot of coverage. And as I mentioned, the GH06 fantastic tripod head, the link is in my description, and the legs are from somewhere, I don't know. But I can extend one all the way down to the ground, and then the other two can stay up on the stage, but I have a mid-level spreader that prevents it from going over the other bar. 
So, uh, my monitor, I love it. This is how it works for normal configurations. However, now that I'm on a tripod and I'm not hovering over my camera, I wanna bring that over to this area, a little closer um, to my eyes so I don't have to lean my head over and look down. I can just bring it closer to me. Uh, and that happens a lot, especially during long recordings for like conferences, other type of uh, video work that I do. Um, I've put it in this configuration before. It just brings it a little closer to the eyes, a little easier to see the focus and uh, judge your composition. So this is how we're gonna run the rest of the night and it's just in and out. So moving from the tripod into the cage, filming the fighters, sometimes in between rounds as well, or just getting their intro walk in and then back to six. I only went through one and a half of these over about four or five hours of filming. I highly recommend them, especially because the battery percentage readout. But the 16 to 35 is working out, I think in my favor. I, I'm actually preferring it more than the 24 to 70. Having that extra width and focal range allows me to capture the heavyweights who are between six foot, six foot five. They're large humans. And at 24, there's just nowhere for me to, to walk backwards. I, I have nowhere to go. There's people uh, paying for tickets. There's fences behind me. So being able to zoom out to 16 is incredibly helpful, especially even if it's short guys, but they're pressed up against the fence. 24 just can't cut it. So I think I'm going to move now from 16 to 35 to be my MMA lens, which I didn't expect that to happen. Thanks. Cheers. All right, checking out, uh, scouting a location for the next Orlando Filmmaker Meetup. And this looks pretty cool. So we can have a bunch of people here and actually talk and hear each other. Cause that's what I want to implement on the next one is actually people bringing in information and talking to the group and having a, a bigger conversation rather than the, the one-offs that we've been having. So I think we'll do this one for the, for the May Meetup. I got an email from a previous client asking for dates available. Unfortunately, I can't do it. So I'm recommending my friend Tristan, the guy in the last clip. We work together on most projects, trust him with everything, and hopefully he can go to San Diego for some corporate work. So, shout out to Dave Moorfield in Orlando. Watching you sell and ship a lens motivated me to put some more kit up for sale. So I just sold my C300. It's headed to Florida. A lot of you guys ask how I use Production Hub to find work, and this is how it works. So I pay for the, the top tier program, which sends me leads. I don't have to use a, a credit-based system. I didn't even know that was an option. But you can see this one came in at 11.47, and by 12.01, I had already sent my email with info, with rates, and asking them to contact me back as soon as possible. And then they're like, oh my gosh. I've grown so much because I took your input, I took Cranky Cameraman's input, more field visuals, and you kind of combine all those together and all of a sudden you're growing. Some of you might find this interesting, but the 16 to 35 and 24 to 70 are almost the exact same size and weight. And I really like that they have the same 82 mil front diameter because you can use the same lens caps. And like I said before, there is blood on here. So I need to clean that off. And I do put a UV filter on all my lenses. Yes, I understand it can soften the image or have some different effects on it. But to me, being able to avoid a scratch or blood or anything that could actually hurt the lens, it's worth having that small UV filter on. And three things to close out the vlog. One, it's an open invite to the Orlando Filmmaker Meetup. May 18th, 7 p.m. We'll be in the back patio. People have been coming from Miami. It's great networking. Two, the consultation calls have really been working for you guys. If you wanna go more in depth, it's a one-on-one -on -one video call where we can talk about camera gear, freelance choices, retainers, anything of that matter. And then the last one is what do you wanna know? Because this is my full-time job. And I've had people ask, yeah, but what do you do for real money? This is it. This is how I make money, how I make my living and how it's hopefully gonna grow. This YouTube channel is a huge part of I'm realizing this can be a another leg, another podium to being a DP. So if there's something that you wanna know, let me know because I can shine a light on it. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next vlog.